Welcome to Tom Talks. Join me once a week right here on Tom Bully YouTube channel. We're gonna break down all the latest and greatest walleye fishing tips, walleye fishing tricks, the absolute location where these fish are right now, and all the practical, relevant information you want and need. Hooked off. And look at that, just gone. For all the information you want and need, stay tuned right here, once a week, Tom Talks. What is going on guys? Today we are back with another video and uh, this is going to be a Tom Talks. I kind of do this little introduction at the beginning of every Tom Talks, but um, this is your first time watching one of these. Basically it kind of sums up um, a lot of walleye fishing stuff, kind of where the bite's been, where it's going, specifics that I don't put in a lot of the videos, um, or some just broader topics that I don't put in the videos because most of the videos are very refined as far as presentation or location or time of year, that sort of thing. So, a um, ton of great information in these Tom Talks. I like doing these. Hopefully, you guys like in doing um, watching these, I guess. Um, very informal, kind of almost a rant on just kind of my experiences. One thing I always uh, say at the beginning of these is none of this stuff's like black and white cut and paste. Um, these are my experiences and a lot of the stuff that I rely on um, to put fish in the boat kind of wherever I go. Um, so yeah, what are we talking about today? Today we are talking about, um, you know, fall is almost here. The last couple of mornings up here, um, temps are low in the 40s and uh, water temps are definitely starting to come down. Um, I've actually been up on Leech Lake for a few days now. Um, we tried to get a BA musky video for you guys and uh, we did not, we got the bites, we had the opportunities, we just did not get the fish over the last day and a half. It would have been a cool video for sure uh, with some big fish included, but it just didn't pan out for us, but it felt like fall. That is the important thing. Now, the last few videos we did was uh, a lead coring video on Mille Lacs, um, a Wally video on Leech Lake, and um, yeah, and what we're definitely starting to see kind of across the board is fish definitely starting to set up more so towards their fall locations. And this is just the very start of this. If you guys live a long way south of me, um, this is gonna be you know a couple weeks, but um, I always like getting information out before you're in the heat of that season, right? Um, I always like putting out you know relevant content for um, you know my top favorite baits for summer. I like doing that in the early summer so you guys can kind of get a jump on stuff um, and things of that nature. So like I said, today what we're talking about is kind of my favorite fall baits. Um, you know, the baits that I want in the boat no matter where I'm going in the fall, right? And uh, these baits pretty much work everywhere um, that I've been. Obviously, in some scenarios, they might. But these are a lot of the baits that I lean on um, in the fall to put fish in the boat. And we're going to talk, kind of talk about each bait, kind of where I like to use it, how I like to use it, and uh, why it's so effective. So we're going to dig right into it. And uh, one of the baits we're going to list is a bait that's just flat out effective anytime fish are in deep water. And these are your speed jigging lures. Your hyper rattles, like this one here. There you go, you can see it a little bit better now. You guys have seen me do a whole bunch of videos on these things. Deadly effective whenever fish are in deep water. And uh, there's kind of a two way push that happens a lot of time in the fall. And basically what happens is you have a lot of fish um, that kind of stay in deeper water. From the end of summer, they'll kind of stay in that deeper water. And then a lot of times, right when turnover hits, you'll have a big burst of fish up shallow too. So a lot of lakes, you might have fish out in 27, 28, 29, 30 feet of water. And then you might also have fish in like eight, seven, you know, 10 foot in the cabbage or in the milfoil or in the weeds, things like that. And I always like lakes that have a split um, because it gives you obviously more opportunity as an angler to catch fish in different locations. But this is a definitely a deep water tool. And you guys have seen me do this a lot where I'm driving around looking for fish drop and I'm getting a ton of messages this week, which is great about guys buying a bunch of these hyper rattles, going out, dropping them on fish and having success. And everybody, every message is basically the same way. Hey, tried your speed jigging thing. It was super fun, right? And it is incredibly fun. And that's one of the most addicting ways to fish walleyes a hundred percent. But where I'm fishing this is a lot of those same locations. A lot of those very steep breaks is kind of a thing that comes into play in the fall. Very steep breaks with fish sitting on them um, towards uh, that kind of fall out to very deep water. Otherwise, a lot of your deep rock, deep rock or deep hard bottom areas are classic fall locations uh, to find walleyes in. And there's very few tools that are as good at, at, at getting bit um, in deep water, especially in a jig presentation like these acne hyper rattles, your jigging wraps, your shiver minnows, things like that. So. Um, yeah, it's obviously just deadly effective and it works in the fall. Now, one question you get asked is, do these things work really good when the water is like 40 degrees, when it starts getting really cold, right? These baits are phenomenal, like phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, up until that water is like 45. And that's when I'm really just cranking it, snapping it real hard, right? The one thing about this bait is it moves very, very fast 
but when it hits bottom is when you get bites. So it's almost like a natural stall. Like think about a guy, um, you know, fishing like smallmouth or largemouth on a jerk bait. A jerk bait's a very hard, very erratic bait, but it sits perfectly still, right? And you get your bites when the bait's perfectly still. So those fish don't have to chase down this thing incredibly aggressively to get it. Basically all they gotta do is wait till it pauses and boom, you know, that's when they bite, right? So I'll crank on this bait real hard until that water is like mid 40s, upper 40s. And then what I start doing is kind of a slower, more methodical lift and I'll kind of drop my rod just faster than the bait's falling. And basically that's, instead of that big crack snap where that bait's just swoop, 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 basically all I'll do is kind of do something that looks like this right here. And all that bait's doing is going swoop, and doing that, hitting bottom. And that's when you get your bites right when the bait hits bottom. Another tip is to let that thing sit on bottom for just like, you know, instead of waiting until it hits and going boom right away, just let it, you know, snap it, let it hit bottom, one, snap it again, right? Just gives that fish an extra second to pause, right? Bait doesn't have any action when it's sitting on the bottom, just gives those fish an extra second to kind of get on it. So um, no fall walleye fishing arsenal will be complete without some hyper rattles, just a deadly, deadly way to fish. And there's kind of another, and I'll kind of group these two baits different, but moving on, um, I'll kind of group this bait in with another type of bait. This is a Castmaster spoon. We'll see if we can get it to focus here a little bit better for you guys. So this is a three ace or half ounce um, Castmaster spoon. I'll, like I said, I'll go ahead and link all this stuff down below. And you'll see me doing a lot of videos on this. I might even try to do the video this tomorrow. I have not decided what I'm doing tomorrow. Uh, but I'll kind of put this in the category of blade baits. And these two baits, this bait and a blade bait are very similar for one thing. You kind of pull this bait up, right? And this spoon, basically what's gonna do, it's gonna go woo, all weird up. And then you let it fall slack or just barely semi-slack. And this thing, when it falls, it's gonna go, it's gonna go just like that on the way down. And it's a three quart or three eighths or a half ounce of the two sizes I use. And uh, pretty much anything gold, silver, or I kind of like this, this purpley one too, like you can see right there. It's kind of a gold and purple with black dots. But um, blade bait, you kind of fish a blade bait the same way. You know, you hop it back and that thing goes and then it kind of falls and just does this kind of thing. So these two baits are very similar. Um, and that's they're, they're obviously deadly in the fall. And same thing, this is kind of a deep water application or a hard bottom application thing. Not a great bait to be fishing in weeds, but a great bait to be fishing um, you know, on deeper sand transitions, deeper gravel transitions, deeper rock humps, things like that, or a steep break where fish are sitting on. And basically how I'm fishing this, you can throw these things, <laughs> the Castmaster, um, just a mile. You can throw these things just an eternity out there. And uh, you're letting it hit all, go all the way down to bottom, right? And uh, you want to keep a kind of tight line at bottom because as that thing's falling, it's doing this, and a lot of times you get popped right away. Um, but throw it out there, let it get down to bottom, and basically all you're doing, unlike the uh, uh, hyper rattle where you're just kind of going like crack, crack, drop your rod. With these, you're just kind of going kind of a pull like this. Pull like that, let it hit bottom. And you can see I'm kind of like, you know, it's in my garage, so I don't want to smash my rods into the ceiling. But basically what you're doing is pull up, and you, I like to follow that bait down with my rod. Pull it up, let it fall. Pull it up, let it fall. And unlike the hyper rattle, where most of your bites on the hyper rattle or jigging wraps or shiver minnows are going to come off the bottom of the lake, on these cast masters, it is an explosive bite. And that thing's going to, you're going to rip that thing up, boom, you're going to be falling it back down, your line's just going to go, poosh, just get cracked, right? Most of the time they got that thing just choked. And uh, it's a super fun way to fish. You'll definitely see me doing this a lot. And uh, if you get fish in like a very spread out scenario, you know, there's a fish here, there's two fish here, there's a fish here, there's a fish here, two fish over here. It's a super fun bait because you can throw it so far, it's effective on a long cast just to rifle it around, right? Throw it all over the place. And as long as you got a clean bottom, you can throw it in a rock too. It's not a real snaggy lure. Um, it's a great bait to fish. And a lot of times I'll be throwing this, like I said, on a lot of these hard bottom humps, um, you know, kind of in that 20 to 30 foot range and just rifling it all over the place, right? Um, so yeah, I don't do it a ton, just straight vertical, though it would work too. Um, I always tend to go to the hyper rattle in that scenario. And I like throwing that cast master at a scenario where I got a lot of fish spread out. The other thing about this bait, deadly, deadly smallmouth lure. Catch a ton of smallmouth. It's no secret that obviously a lot of your smallmouth kind of end up on a lot of this 20 to 30 foot rock um, in the fall time. And uh, it, it is wildly productive for smallmouth. In fact, it's just a good way to fish for smallmouth. And that's not even a good way to like, you know, kind of catch a little bit of both. If you're going out fall smallmouth fishing, I would absolutely have that bait with as well. So super fun way to fish, super effective. And uh, yeah, it's kind of the difference. If I'm going straight vertical, I like that hyper right a little more. If I'm going kind of bombing around, I like that spoon a little bit more. So uh, moving on, 
no fall arsenal would be complete without some kind of <clears throat> big crankbait. Um, this is not, you know, a specific one. I love Berkeley flicker minnows. I've just caught a lot of fish on them. <clears throat> and this is a number nine. Um, but there's a whole bunch of obviously big, bigger style crankbaits that are super productive in the fall. And um, you can just obviously fish these like on mono if you're trying to get down in that 20 foot range. Or you can put stuff on lead core, you know, big stuff. But the, the common thing is big wobbly stuff, right? And in the fall, obviously, a lot of your juvenile perch that were hatched in the spring um, are now getting big. A lot of your small bait fish that walleye are feeding on, obviously, throughout the season, they go whoop and end up getting way bigger, right? And uh, walleyes are feeding on, everything's feeding on big stuff in the fall because the bait's big, right? And uh, they're beefing up for the winter. But um, some kind of big crankbait. And most of the time when I'm fishing these, what I'm doing is same thing. I'm trying to pound um, very close to bottom on bigger hard bottom areas, either big flats, right? Uh, big sand flats, big rock flats, stuff like that. And uh, if you fish just Northern Wisconsin, this, is, this probably isn't like your number one thing to fish, uh, but there's a lot of locations where trolling is the best way to catch big walleyes in the fall, right? And kind of another one that comes to mind, are like my big uh, my bigger reef runners. Um, I love those things. So your tail dancers, like your 30 foot tail dancers, stuff like that. And uh, we'll definitely be filming some stuff on this as well. Actually, we've kind of been filming a lot of trolling stuff recently. Um, but yeah, this, the, the deal is a lot of times later you go into the fall, it's big stuff. And big suspending stuff is good too, because a lot of times it lets you pull very slowly without getting that thing to rise up too much, right? So there you go. We'll add much more specifics on that when we film a video of trolling cranks. And you're going to see a lot of us trolling cranks. Um, it's probably especially very, very late in the fall. I got some cool trips planned up very late this year um, to <clears throat> go chase some big walleyes around. Um, yeah, I guess late in the fall when things are freezing up. But there's one there. And the most important fall bait that you can have in your tackle box is also, <coughs> oh, I got a dry throat, the simplest um, bait to fish, which is the classic jig, right? This is just a little Kalen's. You can probably even hear the knocker in there. A little Kalen's Google Eye jig. And what are we putting on jigs late in the fall? It's almost 99.99% minnows, right? That's what I'm fishing in the fall. Um, and I fish a lot of like suckers, um, <clears throat> some of your bigger chubs, stuff like that. I get away from stuff like fat heads um, and things like that. And that's for the same reason. A lot of those fish that the walleyes are eating are bigger this time of year. And I think one thing guys do a lot is they fish bait that is too small in the fall, um, especially when they're trying to be rigging live bait on jigs um, or on lindy rigs um, or things of that nature. So um, there's just a quarter ounce jig and most of the time when I'm fishing this, um, this is my number one go-to when I'm throwing up into like weeds. <clears throat> oh, I should have brought some water out here. But anyways, this is what I'm rigging up, and I'm, a lot of times I'm throwing this into my cabbage, right? And like I said, there's kind of two situations where you find a lot of fish in the fall. Um, one is in your deep scenario, and the other one is up in a lot of shallow weeds. And it's hard to fish a lot of baits very good in weeds. And the one thing you can do is obviously throw something kind of plastic on there, like a jerk minnow junior or something like that, and thread it on there. But live bait's so effective, it's just, it's almost kind of a must, especially when you get water temps that start getting basically below the 50 degree range, right? and uh, a jig and a sucker, a creek chub, um, your red tails, things like that, um, your shiners are incredibly productive late in the fall. And if I'm fishing deep, I kind of posted a video on this last year, basically about jig strokes and things that are really important when you're jigging. But basically when I'm fishing this deep, it's semi-vertical. Um, I don't like going straight vertical enough because if you watch a jig fish straight vertically a lot, it looks, it looks bizarre, right? It just, it's, it does not look natural at all. So I like to kind of go semi-vertically, either moving with the trolling motor and popping along or just flip pitching and just kind of popping it back like this. But basically I'll pitch it out there, let it get down to the bottom. And most of the time I'm fishing three eighths or quarter in the fall. So in some very shallow water scenarios, I'll go eighth ounce. <clears throat> but basically, like I said, I'll pitch it out there, let it hit bottom, pop, pop. Pop. I'm not pulling it super far because I want that bait staying close to bottom, but I'm kind of getting half snappy with it, right? Just snappy enough to almost give a little bit of trigger to the fish. And the big one whenever you're doing this in the fall is provide hang time, right? You want to manually put that bait back down, right? You don't want this thing just kind of going like, you know, real fast all the time. Most time I'm fishing live bait, I try to go slow and very finessey presentation. Now, the other scenario in which I throw this, like I said, I'll go to a quarter or sometimes an eighth, and that's when I'm throwing at real shallow weeds. 
um, late in the fall. And most of the time this is like from turnover on is when I do a lot of this. And you guys will see us doing a lot of it this year. But it's a lot of side imaging fish and weeds like we've showed before and uh, spot locking and kind of making repetitive casts to those fish. Now one thing kind of remains the same. Walleye fishing is phenomenal all fall, but the one thing that'll change between when the water is 55 and 39 degrees very late in the fall is how many casts you have to make to catch those fish, right? A lot of times the colder the water gets, the more casts you have to make to the same fish to get them to bite. And uh, you still will end up catching a lot of fish. Um, it's just remember that it takes much more time. And the other thing that you'll notice too, it's kind of day to day, but especially more applicable when the water is cold. When you're fishing big minnows, um, when you feel that fish pop that thing, um, or the first time you feel a bite, I like to free spool and just let that fish do its thing for a second. And the second he starts moving away from me, or I've given him like three, four, five seconds, reel down and crack that fish. Because a lot of times the colder it gets, um, it takes those fish. A lot of times they'll just kind of pop it and they'll just sit there with it. So if you find yourself missing a lot of fish on jigging minnows, uh, bigger jigs, bigger minnows in the fall, definitely give that fish a little bit of time to eat it and you'll end up catching a lot more walleye. So um, that's kind of the setup. Hopefully this video is informational for you guys. You know, we got. Kind of our deep water jigging tools, obviously you can fish a jig deep as well, but as far as artificial lures go, your hyper rattles, your jigging minnows, your shiver or your shiver minnows, jigging wraps, um, and your hyper rattles, the cast master spoon, phenomenal bait in the fall, the trolling break cranks, definitely a very way, effective way to catch them in the fall, and then your standard jig and live bait, generally a minnow, a chub, a shiner, something like that. So um, this is kind of it. This is what you guys will see a lot of videos on over the course of the next um, probably month and a half, two months here. And uh, I always like putting this stuff out a little bit before, but we'll get into a whole bunch of the specifics on these baits um, in future videos. But like I said, I want to get it out now. So I appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned for more content. I have no idea where I'm going this week, but I just got back home and I'm packing the boat up again. And we're heading out tomorrow to film some more stuff. So appreciate you guys watching. If you're not yet, please subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.